Okay, everybody, welcome to this presentation. Thank you for uh, joining at this late um, hour in the middle of the day. Um, we're going to have a talk about Java Flight Recorder. Uh, before we start, I would like to extend my gratitude, or we would like to extend our gratitude to uh, the Dutch Railways for inviting us to do this presentation for them. Um, I think most of you should be able to identify the, the, the Dutch Railways. I mean, those are the guys who uh, make sure that the trains run every day. Um, we're able to get here in the first place. Uh, there are some facts about the uh, the Dutch Railways first train in running in 1837, I think. It's a bit hard to read, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, and more than 6,800 kilometers of track, so that's quite impressive numbers, um, meaning that you have to do, a of, of course, a lot of IT. And for that, uh, also use Java Flight Recorder to ensure that our applications are running correctly in, uh, in production. Uh, first, a quick introduction of who we are. Um, this is not a face you probably recognize, and maybe an explanation on that. Uh, we both work for Group 9. Rick, the guy on the right, was supposed to do uh, the presentation on JFR, which we're going to discuss a lot of flow of events. He had his own flow problems, uh, which I won't get into too much <laughs> details, but he had a, a lot of stomach uh, flu and he wasn't able to join here. So I'll be substituting for him. I'm hoping that I can just <laughs> entertain you <laughs> the most. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'll be substituting for him and uh, uh, give you the inform information so we can still do this, uh, this presentation. Uh, because the show must uh, must go on. Um, I'm Miron. I work for Group Nine. Um, I work both as a uh, consultant for Group Nine, often in, in architect roles, uh, for fifty percent of my time, and the other fifty percent of my time, I'm the competence development manager of Group Nine. So I basically make sure that we are uh, all staying the smart guys that I hope we are. Um, and I work together. For this presentation, one of the brighter guys I know, yeah. Vincent. Yeah, so I'm Vincent, also working for Group 9, also part of the uh, brighter traineeship at this point, and uh, happy to present for you uh, today, guys. So, yeah. Oh, we already covered this one. <laughs> yeah. So, actually, um, yeah, so a slide on the NS. And actually, we also uh, already did a webinar uh, on this topic, on Flight Recorder. So, uh, yeah, we actually thought, what is the, I mean, Pasting huge links on, on slides is not that useful, so, so we created a nice QR code. So if everyone, anyone wants to see the, the uh, webinar, you can use this QR code. It's also available when you just Google for uh, NOJUG NS Flight Recorder, I believe. So yeah, let's start with a question. Um, who of you guys actually is using Flight Recorder uh, right now in production? Um, oh, I see somebody looking away. Is actually anyone just using it uh, then in development at all? Yeah? Okay, okay. Well, yeah, so that's actually also the main reason that, that we are giving this uh, talk today is because it is really useful and we actually figure that not that much people are using it as we, um, yeah, would like it to use. Yeah, and I'm actually also realizing now, right now that I'm stealing this slide for you, so sorry. No, sure <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, so that's why we are doing this uh, presentation today. And I, I'm also going to show you a couple of uh, practical examples, which are uh, based on uh, personal experiences that we uh, encounter as uh, consultants at uh, clients. That is actually that, that you um, are on this new project, that you um, inherit this uh, piece of code. Um, in some cases, uh, actually, most of the cases is very important code. Other people, uh, uh, teams are depending on it, and it's just too slow. So you have these deadlines and the demos coming up. So yeah, what happens then? Yeah, you get these kind of calls. So yeah, so the stakeholders calling you. Yeah, why is it not working? Well, actually, it is working, but it's just slow. And well, the next question then is, okay, when can you fix it? So. What you then need to, to fix this is, of course, tooling. So we would like to have this. So in the current sprint, our time budget allows for this. So yeah, I was wondering, is it also familiar to someone? Hands, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, it's nice, because I already have seen more hands than uh, the flight recorder hands. So <laughs> people can learn something today. So yeah, also beside this, there, there are also other reasons besides just the time budget, why tooling might be missing. I mean, it, the, the, the learning curve for the tooling could be too high, it could be too expensive. Um, what you can often see is that people try to use tracing using uh, methods. I mean, we have this classic, 
I'm also wondering, did, did anybody code this recently? This, 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 this piece of code? Yeah, also? Yeah. <laughs> okay. who, who has coded at all yeah, in actually, this lifetime? Yeah. <laughs> can I, show, uh, can okay. I have a show with a baseline, everybody, guys, baseline. Come on, everybody. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and besides, I mean, this classic, uh, what I also see very often is that people end up using other tools that are not meant for profiling, but they try to use it. So, yeah. What, and what the issue with, with these kind of tools is, I mean, it's telling you stuff that you are already knowing that, that, that it's too slow. So it doesn't tell you anything about the, the internals of your application. So yeah, that's, that's, that's also the reason So for this talk today. Uh, actually, you don't need all of this. You have the EVM, it's, it's all you need. And you can start using it today or probably tomorrow. Yeah. So back to you, uh, Jeroen. Yes, thank you. Um, so, and then like, like Fizzle was using, I mean, we are often encountering, uh, encountering performance issues in production during development. And the main question, of course, is how can we do that better? There are quite a few commercial tools available, but one of the, the, the beautiful things about the JVM is that it's actually packed with a profiling tool, which is actually really good. Um, and that's called Java Flight Recorder, JFR, um, and Java Mission Control, which is the user interface for uh, Java Flight Recorder. And, um, the question is, okay, well, what is JFR? JFR is an event-based, I mean, it's basically on slide, right? Event-based tracing framework integrated inside the JVM. So it's just running already inside the JVM. You don't have to do anything for it. It's pre-packaged. Um, it's just there for, your, for, for you to use. And one of the beauties uh, of it, and we'll get back to that later in, in, uh, in, in a second, is you can actually use the profiling in heavily used production environments, so without real big impact on your production environment. I think if you used a number of profiling tools in development, for example, I think you will recognize that those profiling tools themselves have a performance impact on uh, the application. You can't run them continuously, you, you can't run them in production because then you will just slow down production, making the problem worse, which you're encountering. Um, and one of the beauties about JVM is, uh, sorry, uh, JFR, is if you run JVR, uh, JFR in, in, in just on, on regular modem production, it actually has um, a overhead of 1%. So it, 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 it decreases the performance of your application by 1%, which is actually, I think, we can agree on that. That's really, really slow. Uh, sorry, really, really not slow. We understand you. <laughs> <laughs> really little. Um, and actually, one of the, it's, that's one of the, th the, the things that struck us as odd. We see a lot of guys in, in, in projects doing uh, this kind of profiling, to, uh, using either commercial tools, using the, the infamous uh, system on current time millis. Well, actually, this has been bundled with the JDK since JDK 7.update 40. I mean, that's ages ago. I mean, I think that, I don't recall the exact year, but six years, seven years ago, eight years, even more? Maybe before I started programming. Yeah, yeah. Before, <laughs> <laughs> yeah before you started programming. When you were still in high school, probably. Yeah. <laughs> oh, correct, so there's actually a tool which is already present for ages and we're just not using it. It's just kind of the hidden gem in, uh, in the JVM. Um, so that's what we wanted to share with you. And if you look at uh, the JFR, um, JFR initially was part of the commercial build. So you had to uh, use uh, colon xx, sorry, attack xx colon, plus all the commercial features to actually use it in the initial versions of the JVM. You have to really have to use the Oracle's version, of course, of the JVM to be able to use it. But ever since uh, JDK 11, it has been open source and it's, it's generally available. Uh, the JVM will actually give you a warning if you use that um, command line operator in, in any recent version of the, uh, the JVM. It will still work, of course, but it's, it's, it's just not needed anymore. Um, and one of the beauties of the JVM, uh, sorry, of JFR actually, is that you can activate it on an already running JVM. So it's not something you need to attach, it's not something where you need to configure some Java agent to uh, be, be prepackaged with your application or run in, in, as a command line option. Um, you can just activate it and deactivate it whenever you want. Uh, and again, because it only has 1% performance impact on, on default profile, um, yeah, it's, it's something you can just run in production endlessly and it, it doesn't really hurt your uh, production environment at all. Um, showing the commands on, on how to, to activate it on, on running JVM, you can use the J command tool, give the PID of your uh, running Java application, then command jfr.start to start the, uh, the recording of uh, the JFR events. Uh, give it a name, of course, to be able to identify it, and you can use the settings as default to... There's two profiles. There's a default profile, which has about 1% um, impact on performance, and you can use a profile setting, which has about 2% uh, um, impact on performance, but gives you more information, obviously. 
You can dump that same uh, recording to a file, so you can analyze it later. For example, you're running a production, you're activating this, dumping it to a file using SHH to uh, connect to that box, transfer the file and, and uh, analyze it locally on your machine. And in the end, of course, you can stop it if you don't need it anymore. You can just really stop that specific recording and uh, uh, don't have any impact on the JVM at all. Um, well, that all sounds really nice, of course, just showing these, these commands on the slide, but I think really yeah, I can give can a quick example yeah, of the command line. Would you like yeah. to do that? Thank you. Yeah. So I actually, this is going to be a bit awkward because I have to close the presentation to be able to go to my command line. So sorry for that. We were doubting we do it doing the fancy, we are just doing the way it works Oops. and <laughs> kind of choosing for the yeah. presentation the way it works. It's yeah. So <laughs> we have to uh, guys. can you guys see my command line? No, you can't. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, you can. Okay. Let me zoom in a bit. So, yeah. So, um, as Jeroen just showed, um, you can uh, use GCMD to uh, attach the running process. But actually, we at uh, currently, uh, at our cur current project, are just starting every uh, application with a flight recorder enabled by default. So, given that you have a uh, application, you can just go with um, start flight recording. And you know what? I'm just going to tap uh, the up arrow <laughs> like everybody does. And actually, so the comments that you can use is uh, start flight recording. Actually, this might differ per implementation and version. So for a bit for Open GDK 11, you can use uh, start flight recording. Then you can specify the name and you can specify the max age. So if you do this, it will start the application and it will also show you uh, already the comment that you can use. So then using JCMD, you can just, as Jeroen said, you can use the, the, the PID of the application, but you can also just use the uh, application name, actually. And then you can use uh, GFR check, and it will show the recordings that are running. And then you can also use GCMD GFR.dump. Then you have to specify the name of the recording that you want to dump. And then, uh, it's actually pretty interesting, you can also again specify the max age. Because what I did here, um, here, so during the start of the recording, I said that I want to have a max age of two hours, which means that uh, uh, the retention is for events that are uh, max two hours ago. But yeah, if you have just seen something weird happening in uh, an environment or locally, you can also just say, okay, but just give me the last two minutes. So then it will dump the recording and yeah, you can open it. And in a bit, I will show you uh, how you can uh, analyze the recordings using uh, mission control. But uh, first back to uh, you, Jeroen. Let's hope this works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, also, um, I added a link, didn't have time to generate the QR code. But uh, if you go to this, you will get actually a spec on all the uh, GFR options that you can use for OpenGDK 11, but they're also similar to the uh, other versions. So, yeah. Let's go on. Yes, um, something which we also wanted to share with you guys is um, you can think of Java Mission Control and JCMD kind of like the, the Swiss Army knife um, of, of Java. Um, I don't know how many of you guys used, watch, used to watch MacGyver. I mean, to kind of, kind of seriously, I see quite a few younger guys <laughs> here. You, you actually, you know MacGyver. I mean, I grew up with that. It was, it was kind of my when I was young. I see actually <laughs> some, some younger guys who actually know it. But I mean, MacGyver could, could just basically create a tank with just a chewing gum and a uh, and a Swiss Army knife, right? I mean, that was what the whole show was about. Um, and if you look at uh, Java Mission Control and JCMD, that's Basically, if you want to do kind these kinds of analysis, these are your two tools to use. Uh, there's, of course, quite a few tools which have been present in, in the JVM and in, 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 uh, BIN directory for, for ages. Um, basically, for most of these cases, JCMD is the better option to use. So that's for JMAP, JSTAG, uh, JSTAT, JINFO. It, it, it's easier to use GM, JCMD. It's, it's more efficient. It's just hard using this. And if you want to do uh, more of the user interface side of that, that's Java Mission Control. So Java uh, command allows you to operate stuff from the command line, but Java Mission Control is more the user interface, which allows you to interactively browse, uh, interact, start, stop, etc. Uh, all these commands in a nice user-friendly way. 
Um, and um, of course, Java Flight Recorder kind of is the underlying principle of it all, where um, the, the, uh, the in the underlying technology inside the, the JVM. Um, we'll next we're going to some of the just some screenshots. I think that uh, Vincent will be showing them later on in in, in yep. practice, but just to give you an initial warm up of what you'll be looking at, so uh, you have some some view on that. Um, this is basically is, is, is JMC. I think that most of the guys ever using uh, Visual VM or these kind of tools, it, it kind of looks like familiar, right? I mean, it's, it's a, uh, a Java uh, JVM Russian running mission control in this case with the MBean server. It's using JMX under the hood. And we have flight recorder with a JMC default, which is a default recording, which is basically r just running uh, in practice. And my own test JMC recording, which has been run, which will be running for 13 seconds. So that's just basic your interface where you can see JFR running. Um, the JMX console, so that's basically also integrated inside uh, the admission control. It gives you the um, information you we also previously found in, in Visual VM, stuff like um, uh, the processor. Um, usage, memory usage, uh, stack overviews, triggers, um, the fragmentation of, of the, the heap, the, the, the garbage collecting information, basically everything you would normally find in, in Visual VM and then those kind of tools, just to give you information on what is running in, uh, in practice. Um, and one of the nice things actually about um, JMC also, it is also allows you to define triggers. So basically, you can define, um, go to the, the JMX console, and then uh, specify that given certain events which happen in your application, you want to do stuff. And do stuff is do an application alert, console output, output, but also dump a flight recording. So you can basically configure this for your application, have it running in, in real time. And then whenever these events happen, mostly in the middle of the night when I'm asleep and I actually want to get some sleep, um, I can just dump that and, and have that ready for me to analyze the, the next day, for, for example. Um, so uh, as an example, you can set that if you CPU usage is too high, for example, it's running at 90%, and the, the EPU is, is CPU is stalling, I can have that um, dump being recorded, analyzed the next day. And if you do such a dump, what it will give you in the end is these kind of results. You can, of course, drill down on that and I mean, putting that all on the slide will make it kind of, kind of highly unreadable for you guys, so I won't do that. Uh, but it gives you all kind of information about what is actually happening inside the JVM. Why is my application slow? Well, in this case, it's probably, if I would make an educated guess, it's probably um, a lot of memory being used. Um, GC doing overruns, and doing stop the world uh, kind of stuff, and making sure that the application basically does nothing. So we can identify why is, is that happening, why is there a lot of memory being used, and we can try to solve that in uh, in production in the end, uh, hopefully. Um, so this is basically the high-level overview of what is happening inside the J uh, JMC. So the tool that gives you some information on how to really dig down in uh, this kind of information. Um, hopefully that will prepare you for Vincent. Yep. Yeah, okay, so let's get back to uh, some more hands-on uh, presentation. So let me switch back to You have, to, you have to switch the... Uh yeah, I'm doing that. Okay. Yeah, so actually, so as uh, you already showed, uh, when you open Flight Recorder, you get the um, automated analyst results. And the cool thing is that um, the GVM itself by itself already is um, creating a lot of events. So just uh, using the basic GFR, you already have a large amount of data available. For instance, you can check the garbage collections. And for instance, you can see the thread use and memory allocations. So actually, so basing just, this is just uh, without the GMX connection, this is just based on GFR events. And so just by creating a dump, you can analyze data without that, yeah, JMX connection that we all know and uh, without using Visual VM, you can just analyze your data. Um, GFR actually also uh, allows for pretty good correlation um, uh, options. So for instance, if you see something um, happening on a thread, you can just say, okay, I want to um, yeah, 
the focus on, uh, yeah, for instance, this, this thread, say, store as focus selection. And then in all of the views, it will show events related to um, one of the properties of the event that's showing. And also for a bit, uh, in a bit, I'm going to show you how you can create your own events so that you can correlate on your own data here. So, um, yeah, but first then, back to you. Thank you. I'll switch back. Okay, one of the questions that we wanted to uh, dive into is one of the things that we said in, at the start of the presentation is that JFR is able to um, do all this with only about 1% of impact on the, uh, the running application in performance-wise, which is kind of insane if, if you think about it. I mean, the, ma the main question is why is this way faster than most of the logging tools available? And um, if you do a comparison of the various options which, uh, which can be seen, um, so we compared JFR disabled and JFR enabled, log for, uh, log for J uh, off, log for J with, uh, at info level, uh, Java, util, U, Java util logging at off, Java util logging at info level, and just a redirected system out, the, the ugly way. Um, if you could compare the, if you compare the, uh, the performance characteristics of uh, the various options, I mean, you can see that JFR enabled um, actually uses less than Java Uta logging in off mode, which is kind of insane. I mean, basically, if, if it's doing the full-blown analysis, it's still faster than doing logging. Um, I, mean, I mean, you can, of course, use logging just to use time sims to see where uh, stuff is going slow. Um, JFR is actually more, more um, efficient than that. And if you use JFR disabled, it's actually using, it isn't using any performance at all. Um, so, on the other hand, I mean, you see the question marks at Java Utah logging and the redirected system out, so these two. And that's basically because if you check at the performance characteristics of those compared to um, JFR enabled and even Log4j, then um, they were kind of off the scale, so we had to put them in a different slide, uh, else you couldn't see anything. Um, redirected system out is just insanely slow, never use it. Um, I mean, you shouldn't be using it any way for logging in any sense, but um, it's it's really slow, but even you, you have user logging at info level is insanely slow, um, especially compared to, to JFR. I mean, it's 1,400 nanoseconds versus 43 million and 120 million. Uh, that's kind of a, a big, uh, big change. And the real question, of course, is how does JFR do this? How does JFR do this to, to able to um, give such great performance characteristics, not having an impact on your uh, application and production, and still giving all this information. And the big secret actually is, is how does it work under the hood? Um, JFR actually reuses the internal um, events sent out by the JFM already to do its internal housekeeping, to trigger uh, garbage collecting, to basically do the clustering and everything that's really going on internally inside the, uh, the JFR, uh, inside the JVM. Um, and basically what JFR actually does is just externalizing those events. If you switch off JFR, those events still need to be sent just to make sure that the JVM functions. If you're enabling JFR, then you're, all you're, make, you're doing is making those events available for consumption. Um, and that's why it, it's so incredibly efficient, it's doing this anyway. Um, and one of the things that... Um, Vincent already mentioned RD custom events. Um, these are a really powerful mechanism. I think TimeWise is probably going to be a challenge to, and to dive fully into that. Um, but it really allows you to do your own custom events to make sure that you're able to correlate on specific application behavior uh, happening in your application. I think that Vincent can probably um, um, explain that way better. But one of the nice things also about JMC um, is that JMC comes with a filtering mechanism. I mean, you, I think you can imagine that there's an insane amount of events being generated at every second. So you need a way to correlate, to filter, to be able to really dive down, do a deep dive into those um, events and really drill down to the actual cause. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so actually, <laughs> Let's get to the, the real interesting part. So, yeah, so from Java 9, you can create your own uh, custom events. So, um, let's uh, get back to the use case, which I started with in uh, the first presentation. Is, yeah, so, so this, this case that we have 
encountered, I think plenty of times at, at, at the customers, where you have this, this, this service and it's slow. And actually, also some of the use cases, it's, it's even more interesting because the slowness doesn't even have to be in your own code per se. Uh, it can also be due to waiting on, on another other service through a gateway. So yeah, so the interesting then, thing then is, is that actually you can start um, profiling, actually doing meta profiling by just using EVR. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's switch to um, a bit. Um, It's switched. Again. Yeah, I'm switching. So yeah, so I'm going to show you an example based on what I just recently created. Is um, yeah. So uh, this is a combination of uh, what you're seeing here is of uh, GFR and Lombok. So um, what I'm doing is is I'm creating a custom GFR event. So you can just create um, like a basic DTO and uh, use the annotations provided by a uh, flight encoder. So I'm creating a uh, GFR event here that will, uh, well, yeah, it will also uh, work as a basic stopwatch because all GFR events do that and they also keep the uh, uh, thread that is created in. But you can also add your own data. So what I'm doing here is, uh, given that in this example it's a REST service, I'm going to add the user ID uh, I'm going to add the method where it's invoked, so I can correlate on that. And I'm also going to add a correlation ID, which will allow for uh, method tracing, as I'll show you in a bit. So actually, there are um, a couple of points in my application where uh, I am uh, creating these and uh, committing these events. So the first is um, in a filter that I created, just a uh, simple JUX arrest filter. So what I'm doing is on the incoming chain, I'm uh, using the Lombok builder to build a GFR event, set the request method as method, set the user ID as authentication, and I'm using a thread local uh, to set a uh, correlation ID. Uh, it will be even better if you actually have um, correlation on your whole stack, so it could come from the header, but in this case it wasn't, so I'm just creating my own correlation ID, which I'm binding to thread. So then I'm saying um, GFR event begin, which Begin, starts the stopwatch that is actually built in the event. Then I'm binding it to the uh, request context. And so, and on the outgoing chain, I'm retrieving it from the request context and I am committing the event. So, and commit both stops the stopwatch and yeah, commits the event to the GFR. And actually, yeah, because otherwise I'll get in a fight with Sonar, of course, I'm clear, clearing the uh, correlation ID from the thread. So another place where I am uh, also uh, committing events is on the uh, services and repositories from inside the application. So I've created a interceptor uh, calling GFR trace events. The um, implementation is very simpler, similar to the uh, implementation um, used on the filter. So uh, I'm starting the event, actually invoking the method being called, and then afterwards committing the event. And then you can use this in uh, a service, for instance, like this. And then every invocation through CDI will uh, commit this event. There are also sometimes certain places where, um, for instance, within a service, so when the calls don't go to CDI. So for instance, you have the service and you know that internally it's calling this method and you are particularly interested in this method, then uh, you can do something like this, where you just actually create a uh, wrapper where you can just um, pass the method uh, runnable and create an event there. So also similar uh, like to the uh, so actually like the, you know the, the poor guys interceptor. So yeah, and then you can use it like this. So using this, you have actually very cheap uh, method tracing. I mean, I think I programmed this in a couple of hours. So then let's switch to a uh, example of a dump that you're creating. So again, uh, backup mission control. And um, now the interesting thing is, is that you can say to mission control is I want to have a custom page and 
especially dedicated to the events that I have created myself. So now I have this custom page, which um, is dedicated to um, the events I'm creating. So in this page, you can actually just um, correlate, for instance, on the correlation ID, which is uh, specific for each request. And then you have all your invocations. Then you can say, OK, for each invocation, I want the uh, total duration. So now I know that this request call took uh, 1.8 seconds. Then you have all your events that are available, that, that have com been committed during this call. And then you can just uh, have enable ba basic map tracing. So using the method name, you can just go through the whole event and see the uh, duration of the events. You can also do any further uh, grouping. So you can say, OK, now I wanted to group by the uh, method name. And then you can get very specific information. So this is actually pretty interesting. So this allows you like, to have meta tracing without actually enabling any new tools. Uh, I'm actually using it right now. Um, it's, as I said, it's pretty cool. Um, it also allows you for the... Uh, um, uh, for for uh, any more um, correlation. So I can say, OK, take uh, this event, set it as focus selection, and then switch, for instance, to the garbage collection pane, and say, OK, so let me show the garbage collection starting from the event time. And then you can show, see uh, what garbage collection was going on during this request. So. Um, yeah, so basically using these custom events, you can have um, meta profiling actually implemented right now without implementing Gmeter or uh, open tracing or anything. Um, yeah, so that's what I want to show you. So let's go back to the presentation. Yeah, back to you, Jeroen. Yep. Um, of course, if, if you're analyzing these kinds of uh, performance issues, one of the things that you really need to uh, look into, of course, is the, uh, the correlation between certain events happening. Um, there can be stuff happening at the JVM. There can be stuff happening at the uh, operating system level, at the application uh, level, you, you, the own runtime libraries. And kind of the, the issue is often it, it's not one thing. You need to really dive into, see the correlation, see what's happening, see how you can, can analyze that. Um, and that's where you can uh, can really use JMC to really dig down into that, make, find that correlation, see what, what is happening under the hood in your application at the operating system level and um, uh, getting that information out. Um, so for example, you can see how, uh, how busy the CPU was on the operating system, how busy the garbage collector was, was it caused by some background uh, job apparently running which caused all CPU to be hogged, was it a memory issue making uh, uh, the garbage collector go wild, stuff like that can be uh, identified and as Vincent showed, um, you can always add your custom events to that to indicate specific items in your application which are really of interest to you. I mean, you, you can do this, uh, of course, throughout your application. I think we, we can all imagine that adding these custom events will, of course, have a, uh, a performance impact uh, because you're sending additional events on top of what the JVM is already doing. Uh, so this is with uh, outside of the 1%, 2% range of impact, which we discussed earlier. Um, but it, it, it is really a powerful tool to get insight into what your application is, uh, is doing and really getting into um, uh, analyzing what the performance, is, performance issues are in your application. One of the stuff that we didn't fully uh, went into um, is the JFR event streaming uh, released in Java 14? Yes, yeah, it's actually also pretty interesting. Uh, in the webcast, I show an example where uh, you can, for instance, use event streaming to uh, stream to an InfluxDB and show it on a Grafana dashboard. It's also, uh, also available in the Git repository that are linked in the um, webcast page. So, for, uh, yeah, anyone who's interested, you can check it out. And yeah, it's actually pretty cool. So. Yeah, you can also now just live stream your events without using a dump. Yep. Yeah. Um, so just to give you a small re uh, recap of what we discussed, um, basically JFR is one of the hidden gems that we have in the, um, the JDK since Java 7, Java 7 update 40 to be precise. Um, you can use it from the command line, just interact with it using JCMD, 
uh, to start it, to stop it, to dump it, to check it, etc. If it's running, uh, it comes with a full-blown uh, user interface, Java Mission Control, um, which uh, allows you to really dig down deeply into those events, get uh, uh, correlations, get uh, uh, events, filter them, get insights. And I think one of the most important aspects of JFR is that you can actually use it continuously in production. It won't um, impact your application that much. It's running anyway. Um, so why not start using it as a one of the probably one of the nicest tools we have in our JVM um, collection? Then um, I think, yeah, I think like that's this. basically it. Yeah, yeah that's basically yeah, it. Yeah. So, um, so actually, we also had some T-shirts left from. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had to promise my colleagues that I was going to hand them out. So we had this catch the exception uh, game, which is actually pretty fun. So I'm, I'm not sure, is there anyone who didn't play the game already and doesn't have one of the Catch the Exception t-shirts? Yeah? Oh man. <laughs> now everybody's going to know that I can throw it all. <laughs> <laughs> so. Let me help you. Oh. Yeah. yeah, also you. <laughs> oh, another one for you. <laughs> yeah. Please, bro. Yeah. We have plenty of more t-shirts left, I understand, <laughs> actually. So, uh, yeah. yeah. If you'd like to uh, come visit us, of course, we'll be here available for uh, questions after the presentation. We'll be t probably taking some um, questions now because we have a bit of time left. Yes. Um, if w if we, we will probably see you later, uh, either at the uh, stand of the National uh, yeah, NS, NS. NS um, <laughs> at the Group 9 or the Bridal Stand, or at, later on at the drinks. Um, don't know if there are any questions from the audience. I saw had yes. Okay, so the question is, if you do a dump of two weeks, what will be the file size of that dump? Yeah, so, of course, it depends on the uh, profile settings that you are using, because, uh, as you were told, you can use the default profile, use a profiling profile, or specify on, in which you can actually limit which events you want to collect. But from my own experience, uh, actually, the, the dumps with the default profile can get pretty big. I actually never have tried to have a max age of uh, two weeks running, but I, I think it, it will run into the gigabytes. Yeah. So if, if you want to do that, I actually, um, yeah, use a limited profile. While actually you can, of course, the, uh, as I showed in the, the, the link uh, for the options, there are plenty of options to also uh, fine tune it. So of course you can. It's not going to be kept our memory. You can say to uh, the GVM to flush them to disk. But then, yeah, you <laughs> you have uh, a large amount of uh, disuse then. But but yeah. Okay. Okay. So the question is: Is it in all the versions of the, the uh, JVM? I think you said Open JDK nine, right? No, Open J nine. Open J nine. Oh, sorry. That, yeah. Is it in Open J nine? I think that that's the Oracle implementation. Yeah. If I'm not. IBM. IBM. Yes. Actually, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, it probably will be included, but um, as I said, the, 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 the exact the options and which options you can use really differs per implementation and per version. So you really have to check with the documentation that comes with that version. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes? <laughs> Yeah, so the, the, the streaming events actually comes with a significant larger overhead because you are uh, actually using a socket to offload it to some database. It provides some overhead. It, it is using some kind of, I believe it uses HTTP, but I'm not sure. So it actually uses some client. So yeah, and you also have to, I mean, the, the whole streaming itself is pretty basic. So you have to write your own implementation uh, around it. So yeah, it will come with a, um, a promise hit. But again, I mean, when you use uh, other tools, I mean, if you want to get your data into Grafana us using anything, you are going to have to take this hit. So, yeah, so, so th there is a performance hit comparing to just using plain uh, flight recorder. But again, I think yeah, it, it just comes with wanting to do that at all. Yeah. This is probably also, if you look at it, I mean, uh, you're, you're getting a performance hit anyway, indeed. But the, the best part is, is you're not getting a performance hit or really ne negligible performance hit for using flight recorder. I mean, the yeah. actual recording itself is negligible compared to uh, more proprietary or other solutions which do have that performance hit. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. The JFR recorder is a sampling recorder, right? So don't get sampled. 
Um, Well, actually, uh, so we didn't compile those um, so graphs ourselves. So there are actually, we did the we get it from some actually pretty proficient blog posts. I, I think it was by Oracle, but I'm not sure. If we have to check that. Oracle, yes. Yeah. So um, honestly, to answer your question, I can't. But um, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit of awkward, but it, it, it means that if you, um, basically why we wanted to show it to you is that if you want to do kind of these, uh, uh, get insights into what the forms of the various steps in your application are, you either would need to do logging, yes, um, which is running continuously, or you do JFR. Um, so indeed, it, it is a kind of weird comparison, but if you don't use JFR and use logging instead, um, you will get that hint continuously. That's basically what we wanted to show to you. Yeah, because the, the command line out was not the only uh, method shown in that graph. Yes? Uh, you just showed the, the, the CPU version go ahead, like uh, so many instances per uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, uh, again, go to the body version, uh, you know, since the max is like very high, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can imagine that if you uh, specify some very, uh, if you really want to, you can get that exception. But um, Flight Recorder has options uh, for uh, flushing this data to disk. And also, those are enabled by default. So the recording is not kept in memory at all. Well, the part of it, but it's being flushed to disk pretty fast. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, in the back there. To be honest, I never tried it in that situation, but I do know that there is this option, uh, dump and exit, in which it will just create a dump uh, in exit. And I've seen it dumping in all kinds of scenarios. So if you enable that option, which even might be a default, I think, uh, on some implementations, um, it will uh, create this dump when your GVM exits for some reason. And, sorry? No, it creates a GVR dump. That, that is not an option. So it's a, yeah, you can say to 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 the GVR options create a GV, GFR dump on exit. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I really wish that was possible, uh, but it isn't. Yeah, it's really a shame. So for those options, you need to have a live GMX connection and GMC, GMC running. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, I'm not really sure if I understand the last part of your uh, question, but let's start with the first part. Uh, yeah, so within a container, it depends on in, 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 in what, if, if GDK or GRA is installed, it depends. So uh, actually when you uh, are using a GRE, um, it depends per implementation if it comes with the uh, GCMD utility. But you can add it yourself if you want. Um, for the, the flight recorder functionality itself, it is present because, as Jeroen said, Java is using itself. So yeah, so so you can definitely create um, uh, flight recorder dumps, but you might have to uh, e either do it through GMix or uh, place the GCMT utility there yourself. But some GRE implementations come with also with GCMD. And and for the uh, the, the last part of your question, can you repeat that? Well, actually, that, that um, yeah, so it is happening from inside of the container. So, so let probably you talk about Docker. So, yeah, so it will report the, the the limits and what is currently being used in the container. Yeah, so it is from from the perspective of the container actually. 
but but yeah, since the container is is yeah, it's a virtualization. I believe that yeah. So this is now more a Docker question than than a flight recorder <laughs> question. But I believe that it also to some extent shows uh, the limits of the, the the host itself. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so so when you're talking about the um, the host itself, you can't use GFR itself, so it's only for the container. So, but but yeah, GFR is really useful for the internals of GVM mostly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any further questions? Yeah. Um, if not, I would like to thank you. Yeah. We would like to thank you for your uh, attention <laughs> and yeah. uh, hope to see you later. Yeah, thanks for your time. Mm -hmm.